Good morning. The show, the show will start in a couple minutes. I'm the Grow Boss. This is Cannabis 101. And for the next two hours or until I start getting customers at my store, we're going to talk cannabis. And what are we going to talk about? We're gonna, I have no idea. We're going to talk about growing. We're going to talk about how to successfully grow cannabis and avoid all the failures. That's what we're going to do for the next two hours today. I'm the Grow Boss. I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. Keep watching. All right, good morning. It's time to start the show, Cannabis Hotline. I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. Apparently, I've already lost a couple of functions on my keyboard. However, that's what makes this show fun. you got to keep on the move. It's just like growing cannabis. You can't ask me what you're going to do when. You can't say, oh, I water three times a day, or you can't say, oh, I feed 500 every time. You can't say those things. Just like when you watch me do this show. It's the same keyboard. Why isn't it working what it did? All I'm saying is, growing cannabis is a lot like doing everything else. There is no exact way to do this. There is no exact science to this. There is no, there is no, there is no perfect environment. There's no perfect way to grow cannabis. That's why I always tell you guys, just grow cannabis. You don't have to grow perfect. If you just do a good fucking job for 12 weeks and then harvest, you'll win. So that's why I always suggest it really is growing cannabis is fluid. It's dynamic. You look at all the manufacturer bottles of the nutrients and they tell you what to do and when. What the fuck? That's not how this works even a little bit. And the more you pigeonhole growing cannabis and the more perfect you try to create that environment, the more you're going to fail. Because this doesn't have anything to do with that, and they are mutually exclusive. Hi, I'm the Grow Boss. Good morning, everybody. The number is 84 Grow Boss. If you want to call in, I answer questions. You have caller questions. You're growing cannabis. 
you want to know you want to know what's going on how to get more how to stop your sh how to how to quit killing your shit like you're not ready to give up i always tell you guys call me before you quit why because just look at my used equipment pile of shit although it's very low right now we have been super busy this week and if you remember a few episodes ago i had those little lights those 400 watt lights with the fan bolted on top yeah i sold both of those here's a tip when you go shopping at a hydro store keep your mouth shut so the guy came in and wanted to buy a light for i think it was like 80 bucks i told him the light i'm like yeah i got the lights all i got the light mold for you for 80 bucks and apparently he didn't hear me say bulb so i put the bulb on the counter we put the we put the ballast on the counter there's a ballast hood combo on the counter and he says how much for the bulb all right so it was like a 40 dollar bulb so i said 20 bucks you can have it for half off with the ballast but i had already said you could have the ballast and the bulb nobody's paying attention people are super excited and that's why you have to have a good idea when you go in a hydro store what's going on because I mean that was a super what I gave him for a for a hundred bucks was a super good deal, but you have to pay attention to what's going on. You really sort of have to go in and watch what's going on because I, I'll tell you, I work at a hydro store. I've been doing it for years, and and I'll tell you the rule about a hydro store. I sell hopes and dreams. I sell hopes and dreams. You know you know why I sell hopes and dreams because ninety nine percent of growers that start growing fail. Do I say 85% on my shirts and stuff like that and in the grow book? Do I say like club 15 and do I say 85%? Yeah. But if I told you that 99% of people fail, you would have laughed at me. But the reality is 99% of people fail. And let us I have a very specific definition of fail. Uh, you don't get the harvest you're supposed to from the electricity that you're consuming. You might finish. But that's not successful. That's failure if you don't get what you're supposed to from the light. And you're not going to get that the first time. And even if you get a great harvest the first time, if there's a problem the second time, how are you going to solve it? And this is all about solving problems as far as I can tell. Because everybody that comes through my store that stops and talks to me is having a problem. All the successful people, not so much. They just come in my store grab what they want because it's the same shit all the time and they do their thing and they go why because good growers only have two complaints plants got too big for the light girlfriends hate trimming and if you have uh, uh, i got this butt is so good I, I crushed it up put it in the bowl i touched my eyes and now i'm having an allergy attack but today's butt is so good that it's it's all spectacular you don't have to you don't you don't have to grow the best bud ever all you have to do is grow great bud and to do that if you grow great bud by definition you got the right yield so i just want to point out that the relationship here has nothing to do with anything that goes on in a hydro store i've read every book out there i i've seen three alight what a beautiful book that is um i've seen the Bible what a huge book that is with no information relative to what we do in a hydro store um, if you want a book about a lot of information about cannabis like the Bible and uh, whatever the other book is Ed Rosenthal's book whatever those books are I assume if you needed that information they would be brilliant but I've seen them I've read them and my book, The Grow Book and Equipment Guide, has nothing to do with that. My book, The Grow Book Equipment Guide, comes specifically from working at a hydro store. And as thousands of you came through my store, every time you left, like I'd like, I'd like write down your questions and shit, right? And eventually I noticed after like four customers, I mean, it didn't even take very long. After like four customers, the questions were all the same. And there was nowhere in any book could I look up the information that was coming through my store, the questions that were coming through my store, and find an answer? There was no book that did that. Until mine. In the Grow Book and Equipment Guide, I literally show you the picture and what the problem is. And I explain it to you. And that's why it's so important that you guys understand. 
you, you say you want to know more and you want to know all the aspects of it and that way you can make decisions. Uh, really, you really don't need to know all aspects of it. It's nice to have a complete information, but you can't get all aspects until you've done it one, two, three times. So what I suggest is you put a reasonable limit on this and try to learn everybody's failures before it. Try to learn everybody's failures before you. Try to learn what the top problems are and avoid those. Because if you just avoid the problems, if you just avoid the intersection on the yellow, you're not going to get T-boned on the green in the other direction. I'm just suggesting that there are certain problems that, that, that if you just avoid, you have a higher probability of success for growing cannabis. That's the important thing that comes through my store, is that, is that the people that have problems have a lot of problems. Because if you have one bug, you're gonna get three. How do I know? Because the shit comes in on, the the bugs ride in on the other bugs. And as soon as you have a plant that has a bug, it's weak and sick. So it's going to have more problems. And listen, the truth is, the only way you can ever get a shit, a, a sick, shitty, weak plant is if you do stuff wrong. There's, if you don't kill your cannabis plant, this shit grows like a fucking weed. So that's what this show is. Mine will even teach you how to grow. I just teach you how to avoid all the problems when it comes to growing cannabis. And if you can just avoid the problems, then I bet you'll have more success from everybody else's, than everybody else's books, everybody else's information, everybody else. Because all of these nutrients that you see on the shelf of my hydro store, look at all those nutrients. There's a whole wall of nutrients over there. And that's just like, that's just like 12 brands. There's like 50 nutrient companies. It's amazing. I mean, they're only nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and whatever micros, right? I mean, there's only three minerals that get mixed into all the nutrients. We learned that. And so what I've really tried to focus on for the last few weeks and the last few shows is I've been trying to give you all the information that you need to make intelligent decisions about buying equipment and growing cannabis so you don't come into my store super hot and excited, throwing money at me because you're not paying attention. And that's what I mean by I sell hopes and dreams because the reality is very different of growing cannabis than what you come in the store thinking. It's always, it's always the same problems. And if you can just avoid those. So that's what I've been dedicating these last few episodes to. I'm going to teach you all of the thoughts that race through my mind when I look at a picture, just one picture. And so that's what I have for you today. If you have questions about growing cannabis, the number is 84 Grow Boss. You can call in. We'll go over it. Um, I've got like a nice little close-up pad. We can draw images and stuff on there. Um, and I can help you with your questions. But... I thought we would start with, I have, okay, so let's see, this is, okay, this is a picture of a plant, um, okay, okay, so here's, here's the top of the plant. That's the top of a growth shoot. And if you would like to call in and tell me what you think this is, um, I think I know what this is. And I have a little, I call it something specific. So if you'd like to live chat me and tell me what you think it is, or you want to call in 84 Grow Boss and tell me what you think it is, we will start the process. Now that's picture one. And you guys like this one, I did it before. So it's picture two. So what I'm thinking that we're doing is you can call in and you can ask me a question and take a guess on what you think the problem is and give me as much information as you can about the plant. So I think we're really going to focus on this picture because that's pretty specific and we're going to focus on this picture. Now, there are two separate problems to this. That, that, that last picture I just showed you and this picture, there are two separate problems. But this is, this is something very specific. It's sort of, 
It's sort of on the edge. I don't really have enough information. No, not mildew. And no, I'm not going to do a PDF book. Um, let's see. It looks like some nasty brown water in DWC. Uh, um, I didn't. Okay, let me. I didn't. Okay, I didn't see any DWC to this. Um. Okay, so I don't know about DWC. And let me take a look at. Uh, let me take a look at this guy's. What he put in his email. God, so many people send pictures. Okay. Anyway, so that's the picture. Um, they come to finish that sick plant. Mites. Okay. Ozzy, I'll take mites. Over fertilized. Yes. That's this picture. Okay. I, that one is brilliant. All right. 305, you're on with the grow boss. Tell me about it. Hey, uh, is that the lower growth of the plant? Okay. Did you say that picture? Okay, so I, I don't think I said lower or upper growth, but the picture that I'm showing you now while I'm talking, this is m at least middle growth because when you look at this picture, we have a little bit more information we can glean from it. We see that the plant's clearly going taller and that we can see the plants in the background are shorter. So yes, I would say this top is middle growth. In terms of, in terms of this leaf, I can't tell you if it's middle growth, but Ozzy, Ozzy got it right with the spider mites. So yes. So you got a question you want to ask? So there's your middle growth. I, I don't, I, yes, there's middle growth. This picture here is middle growth. Um, so tell me something about the plant now. No, I was just thinking if it was uh, maybe the lower growth, it could be too much nitrogen, just from what I was seeing because the claw like, but I'm sure you already knew that. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll answer that. Give me one sec. Thanks for the call. Um, three, oh, I was trying to, hey, three, five, two, you're on. Give me a guess. Three, five, two. Did I catch you? All right. Three, five, two, call back. Okay. So, um, nitrogen, specifically too much nitrogen gives you that leaf tip, right? So you get that when you're in flower with too much nitrogen, the tip falls over. You know what I mean? Like that you get five fingers on a leaf and the tip, you'll start to see that tip, cur that just the one. You might get it on multiples, but it's right there at the tip. And that's excess nitrogen and that's in flower. Now, I wouldn't have said excess nitrogen, but somebody already had comment, too many nooch. I mean, Mitch has it again too. Okay, bullet, over watered. Yes, matey mate, that is a sick shitty plant. So all of these factors are components in it, right? And then you look at this leaf here. And and somebody already Ozzy already called it spider mites. So is that pick meant to be weed? Yes. Oh, bullet, he's in DWC. Okay. Overwatered. Mites attacked and overwatered. Oh, I hate it when mites overwater my plant and they get in there and they water your garden when you're not looking. Okay. Spider mites like it uh, warm and dry. Uh, mold likes it. Spider mites like it warm and dry. Mold likes it a little bit humid because they have to saturate the spores to get going. Okay. So there was a couple of answers. Now, too much nitrogen. Eh. Too much nutrients. Yes, too much nutrients is specifically crispy country. When you get, when, buttons, son of a bitch. When you get crispy crunchy on the top. Now, I always tell you guys that there's a difference between acute and chronic. Chronic is a little too much nutrient, a little too much nutrient, a little too much nutrient, a little too much nutrient over a long time. And it fucks the plant up, but it doesn't kill it. In this particular case, you can see the leaves right below the top are really broad. I mean, well, I mean, they're okay, they're small, sorry. But that leaf right there at like the four o'clock, five o'clock position is, is still flat. So this problem is exclusive to above it. 
Now, the leaf a little closer to us, you can see that leaf is chicken clawed and curled. But again, that looks like the top leaf in that branch right there. I mean, it's not the top of the entire plant, but that looks like another top. So, yes, I'm with you on the, on the too much nutrient. And this is spider mites, because what's the rule about spider mites? Yellow spots that congregate in the right next to the corners of the intervenal spaces. So where that little side vein, the main vein, I just hate saying that. I keep looking for another word. I just hate saying main vein, main vein. It's weird. It's uncomfortable. So I keep seeing that main vein down there and then all the little side veins, right? So spider mites specifically attack in the corners of that, of the, where the vein or the, so the side veins meet the main vein. And now the other half of that is what I'd like to point out. Now you see that's technically, okay, is it yellowing between the intervenal spaces? Yes. So let me show you what I mean when I say yellowing from too much light in the intervenal spaces. So this is yellowing from too many nutrients. You can see that on the edge. And then when you get too much light, you get, see, now this is where people start to say iron. Now again, I've been trying to tell you for a while that, <laughs> the studio right the studio is in the back of my store so like don't be like uh don't be thinking like grow boss has got like a studio he's killing it in the studio grow boss okay when you look at this picture here um when you look at this picture here that's yellowing in the intervenal spaces that's too much light but notice it's also curled under but it, the yellow is even it's it's even between all the spaces. Now, when and that's advanced, that's way, way too much light for a long time. But then when you look at this, these are clearly spots. Oh yeah, they don't have to pay $100 to talk for 30 minutes to me today because I'm giving you the answers. But let me tell you, I don't necessarily get people calling me for this. I get people that are calling me because they're getting a pound and a quarter per light and they for their thousand watt and they want a pound and a half. I get people that are calling me to teach them how to do a finesse because they're doing really good, but they're not getting components that they want. So, yeah, I mean, I suppose, but, um, you know, I still do, listen, I probably do, I probably do, I probably do 35 consults a month. Um, 20 of them are hours, 10 of them are half hours. Of those 20, Two are probably facility consults for $79. And when I'm talking about the consults that I do, um, this is this is my cannabis hotline on the website, thegrowboss.com, where you can go and you can buy my books. And I sell meters that, and I have videos that show you how to use the meters, of course, and my ultimate RO, because I'm the only one that builds an RO for cannabis growers, everyone else, markets their scientific ROs for just, they put them in a same box, put them in, right? And they just put them in, a, they just sell them to cannabis stores. Oh, 352. 352, take a guess. Tell me about this plant. Okay, well, Grobos, um, I'll tell you about the plant, but um, I wanted to talk to you about something really quick. So okay. remember a couple of videos back, um, you, you have started a video and there was no audio. And you were talking about, I believe, the microbes and the and the gray white and stuff, right? Yes. And so I wanted to see if you can talk a little about that, bro. If if, uh, if we need these microbes when we grow in hydro, like I grow in the empty buckets using the perlite and the vermiculite, you know. And so I was wondering if I need to, um, you know, add microbes to that because I just use the bottles, you know, I have the the three part bottle with the GH, you know. The, okay. What do you think? Okay. And I'll take the answer offline. Thanks. Okay. I appreciate that. Listen, I'll tell you exactly the idea about how microbes works. And that's, again, one of those things that swims through my dome when you guys come in and you tell me shit. Like, right now we were talking about problems. And I know that if you have one problem, that you're going to have multiple problems. Because if you've overwatered, 
How can your light be the right distance away? The right distance away for what? An overwatered, sick, shitty plant? That sucks. So soon as you don't know where the watering is, then I know you don't know where your light's supposed to be or your nutrients. So that's how I know if there's one problem, there's three problems, whether that be bugs or too many nutrients or whatever it is. Now, the last caller, same, this last guy, same thing. We're talking about the difference between microbes and no microbes. So one of the things that I'd like to show you is I have, let's see, I just, I finished the great root race and I just published, um, I just published, I want to show you in terms of microbes. So I just posted, okay, so it was Great Root Race Episode 1, Great Root Race Episode 3. Okay, so this morning I, I, I made public this video, and this is... All our leaves dry. Okay, that was, that was actually an important thing about, about overwatering. And what I do in these videos is I time-lapse the footage, I show you what's going on, we test all this equipment, we test all these products that you see in your local hydro store, and I'm growing basil in the back. Okay, when I tell you, um, when we talk about adding microbes, okay, so I, I put it all together in this video, and this is, oh, this is episode one. That's why it doesn't look right. All right, hang on a sec. Give me a sec, The Great Root Race, episode three. Good grief. Okay, I know it's more me talking, but check this shit out. This is green fuse. Oh, yeah, this is green fuse. Okay, this. Um, so, okay, this is Clonex. Okay, so this is green fuse. Anyway, let me put that back because I really like that picture to get you the to give you an idea. This is Clonex solution. Okay, this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, check this out. Oh yeah. Okay, so this is week three. And there's, there's a couple of components to roots, okay? If you take a cutting <coughs> with no root, it just has the stem around it. Now remember, every cell on a plant is a stem cell. It can change into any other cell that it wants to change into. You can literally root leaves. You can literally root leaves. I had a guy come to my hydro store five years ago, pay me to come look at his crop. I takes me to his house. <laughs> we go through this house, two, two Doberman pinchers. We go into this room, like literally like, you know, the door flings open from, you know, it's, you got to push it open to get the negative pressure, pushes past it. And I look in the room and there are three four by four trays with four holes by four holes in them. They all have little like three inch net cups in them. And they literally all have a leaf. You ever see that movie, uh, what, what horror movie, they bury you up to your neck and, and they cut their vocal cords and they're making motel hell, motel hell. Oh my God, this guy opens up the door and there's four, tr three trays of 16 plants, but it's not a plant, it's just a leaf. And so he looks at me and he says, they're, they're, they're probably six weeks, eight weeks old, something like that. And I don't know what to say because they're all leaves. There's no tops. He literally chopped the leaves off, rooted the leaves, buried them in three inch neck pots, put them in a lid and has been ebb and flowing them. So I, <laughs> I walk to the furthest table and I pull out the three inch net pot. Literally, the roots are two and a half feet long. And, and they, 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 they literally come up and out of the... The guy had 48 leaves. I mean, think about that. This guy's got... Well, I don't know where they came from. I don't even know what to say at that point. You've never seen anything like it. It's those little net cups with the hydro ton in them and a little leaf. Why? Because anything will root. That's why you have to have a growth shoot. So when everybody talks about cloning, it really, you can clone the fucking leaf. Where are you going to go with it? But you can clone the leaf. 
Okay, so everything roots, and that's brilliant. But you have to have the growth shoot. So now what we're talking about is the plant can continue to grow. Okay, so at the bottom of the stalk, those are all, that whole stalk is all stem cells. Don't care if you cut your clone at a node. Don't care about any of it. Like, here's the Bushmaster taking clones, just plants, and he's putting them in. Here he is taking clones and running them with Clonex rooting gel. Okay, Clonex rooting gel. Blam. Okay, so here's the Bushmaster just taking clones. Check that out. I mean, he's doing it at four times speed. But what, what we're talking about here is there are different chemicals to be used at different times when you think about it. For instance, you now have a clone. It's just a stalk. Okay, there is no point to putting a rooting hormone or food into a clone that has no roots. It, if roots absorb nutrients, why are you adding nutrients? And if the chemical rooting hormone that, that triggers an increase in root growth on the root, um, hang on, I got the picture for you. I mean, this is just like anything, anything medical. If you have, so all we're talking about here is things have to lock into the receptors. And if the receptors are on the root and you don't have a root, how can this, how can green fuse, which is fantastic, how can green fuse possibly lock into the receptor if there's no receptors? So, the trick is when you take a clone, you dip it in Clonex, you dip it in Clonex rooting gel, and you wait a couple of weeks until they have roots. That's why in the great root race, we started using this stuff. That's why in the great root race, we didn't do anything the first week. We just we just fed everything with water and in the other trays, the Clonex solution. Because remember, we weren't testing the Clonex solution. We were testing green fuse and great white. We were testing the green pad CO2s, right? We were testing the Mondi domes. So everything got food because the last time I did the great root race, I killed everything. Okay, so now that we know that green fuse is, works on, it, the rooting hormones must have a root for them to act the, their, exert their action on. And they must have roots to absorb food. We know that the different components that we're using are to be used at different times because if a clone doesn't have roots, if a cutting doesn't have roots, a clone has roots because it's now gonna live. So a cutting is, is from a plant that doesn't have roots. And then you add Clonex gel because this starts the rooting process. And when we talk about looking at the start of the rooting process, what this is right here okay so that's where the root buds start um let's see what this shows us okay i think i'm gonna crack this one open now there's roots now you can add stuff to it like rooting hormones and stuff like that but you can't you can add them but they don't have anything to do with anything until they don't have anything to do with anything until there's actually roots on the plant. That's why I tell you guys, you can buy all, and that's what this video is all about. I'm teaching you the timing of stuff. Because if you listen to these videos, I tell you the same thing in the videos that I'm telling you now. And that is you have to time these things correctly. You, just because you have six things doesn't mean you can be in all six gears at once. You can't go from first to fourth. And there's no point in putting Clonex gel on this because it already has roots now the question was about microbes okay microbes are the same thing microbes live microbes live on the roots of the plants they live on and protect the root so they literally scuff the root surface and that's how they get the sugar from the plant it's not sugar like glue it's not sugar like you put in your coffee it's sugar in the form of starch. Why? Because roots are made of sugar. Sugar stored as starch 
or long-term storage so next year the roots will exist again because if you take starch think about a peach that's hard like an apple we can't eat it a horse can eat it a cow can eat it but they can consume consume starch we have to boil potatoes so these so they can consume starch we can't so the fruit softens from starch into sugar it ripens those are those polyethylenes those ethylene no, sorry not the ethylenes that you smell that come off the fruit that's why they have to harvest them for transport because if you get one fruit start to ripen the ethylenes trigger all the other fruit to ripen one of the tricks that people do is they take a plant that's a couple weeks into flower and they put it into a garden with a bunch of other plants and the ethylenes from one trigger the other plants to flower faster it's just a tough thing to do because who has a garden two weeks who has a plant two weeks into flower when you start the rest but those are the different components so now when we look at microbes microbes take the slough the outer layer of the root they physically like a dermaplast for the stars microbes live on the roots they scuff the surface of the roots and in response the roots physically grow larger in diameter so they grow healthier that's part of the process of having the outer layer scuffed off so do microbes add um, some start to the plant um, I don't know we're gonna be testing that in the next round but yes they can add if you just have the cutting they can add some speed to the root um, in terms of that but then when when they live on the root there's an enormous amount of benefit from having microbes but it's not just the microbes that benefit the plant because they live on it so what the microbes do is they pre-process the nutrients so the plant takes let's say three units of sugar one unit to absorb the nutrient one unit to process it one unit to transport it all around the plant so nutrients take three units of sugar so the microbe takes one unit of sugar breaks it down into a process readily usable for the plant and then provides it to the plant so for one unit of sugar the plant saves two so it, what would take the plant two units it pays the microbe one unit and the microbe also not only does the plant save some sugar the microbe also physically increases the diameter of the root then when the microbe dies because they don't live at colony supporting levels they don't reproduce at colony supporting levels when the microbes die the plants absorb the microbes too so the whole benefit about a microbe is spectacular and even in the even in the great root race you could absolutely tell on the microbe trays that not only I don't know which tray this is but not only oh this this is green fuse and roots by Humboldt that not only were the trays that got microbes bigger uh, they were not only this is okay so this I think is this this tray on the right is the one that got clonex solution the tray on the left got nothing right so you can see the difference of just adding clonex solution so that was the baseline for this now this is just episode three um, there's five episodes to this and okay so this is the control tray that just got water right so these are the three control trays and you can sort of follow along because I start like we start oh yeah here we go so we start like 12 trays and this is this is a microbe tray that you're looking at now enzymes however enzymes also scuff the outer layer of the root like you put peroxide on a cup for sterilizing it you know how it bubbles you know what those bubbles are those bubbles are the cells of your skin those bubbles are the cells of your skin damaged and dead skin being lysed and lysed means that the cell pops and spills its inside when a cell spills its inside it's dead so you're literally at the edge of your wound you're killing this is the microbe tray at the end of the wound you're killing your cells by lysing them oh yeah I mean that's the microbe tray look at those mustaches right that's the microbe tray that is just as old okay this is the this is the clonex solution tray that's just as old but no microbes and then this one here is the uh, is the uh, is the control tray that didn't get anything so nothing uh, control tray that got 
This is the control tray that got the Clonex with green fuse. This is a control tray that just got Clonex. And then this is the control tray that got great white. Look at that. Okay, so I go through all the different products in each episode. This is the, okay, it's a little bit further. So I put it together where I show you how to water, I show you how to do it, I show you what I'm doing here in the store when we had those 600 basil starts going on. Um, yeah, so this is the reality. All of these things work, but that doesn't mean everything works all the time. And the thing is, if, if you don't know how and when to use them, and I have different episodes. One of them is how and when to use them. One of them is promises and temptations. One of them is humidity and humility. One of them is overwatering. So I go over all of the data you need. I give you a grow boss brain dump. I'm just straight giving you the information and you need to take all this information, process it, and then listen to it again. Because the reason that I can answer things the way that I do is I take Nice mustaches, right. See, I take all of the data and it swims around in there. And then when we get a problem that looks like this, I take all that information that looks like this and I take all that information and put it together. Now, see how purple that is? Uh, see how purple the pet, see how purple the petiole is down here? Um, See how purple the petiole is right there? Okay, that's overwatered. Now, could this be too much nitrogen? Yeah, maybe, or the leaf could be folded over. But we do see it here too, and we see a significant amount of twist up here. So there's a lot going on, but the bulk of it, you're right, is the damage done right here. Okay, see the problem that we have when we look at these things is we have to decide what is and what isn't important. So here's our crispy, uh, crispy from too many nutrients. But you can also see as a subtext that it's also got some overwatering. And that overwatering is supported by this leaf right here, which is in focus. And their chicken clawed back here, it's chicken clawed right here. But again, inside that chicken claw, it sort of looks like there's been too much light as well. Oh yeah, this one right here is just brutal, right? So there was a lot going on at this plant. Now, we also know that when we look at that back plant, we can see that it's bean stalked. And if you remember what I tell you bean stalked is, bean stalked is, bean stalked is this. This is bean stalked. When you overwater, the very reason, okay, here's a fact for you. Um, okay, so let's open up this picture. You know why this plant is so wide and bushy? It's in hydro or DWC, don't care. One factor, a major factor to the bushiness of the plant is the amount of oxygen at the roots. Is it a battle that you need to fight? Not really, you can top the plant, but you get more nodes per inch by more oxygen at the root. And by oxygen at the root, I don't mean bubbling more oxygen into the water, even if you're in a DWC. There's just, you can't bubble oxygen in the water. That's just not how that works. But in this particular case, look at how bushy and healthy those plants are. Okay, and bam, oh shit, look at how shit, sick and shitty that shit is. Oh my God, and yet they're both five weeks old. <laughs> okay that's way over watered right that's really bean stocky but when we come back here and we look at this picture and you look back here that is really bean stocky with very little side branching so is it over watered hell yes and if you over water and you overfeed, we probably would have seen like on a leaf like this we would have seen some burnt tips that look like this. That's why I tell you guys, 
Like literally when you buy my book, I literally show you this picture and tell you what it equals. This picture equals this picture equals too many nutrients. That's why I'm telling you, like, I literally read all of the books out there and I was blown away when I couldn't find answers to any of the questions that you guys were asking in my store. I mean, those books are edited better than mine. Oh shit, they, they're, they have more pages than mine. I can't say enough nice things about them. They are fantastic. They, they have very little to do with growing cannabis indoors. In fact, I would like to say that for the most part, they have nothing to do with growing cannabis. <clears throat> I mean, they give you information. Here's how to take a clone. Here's that. Here's this. But that's how to do stuff. They don't give you the information on the backside and how to solve stuff. And that's where the finesse is. Because if you don't, if you just avoid all the problems, you don't know how to do the stuff. You don't need to know about how it works. All you need to know is how not to kill your shit for 12 weeks and then harvest. So this is spider mites for show. But I, I wouldn't say that this necessarily is cow because there's too much twist in the leaves, in all of the leaves. I would say that it's overwatered and there's micronutrient problems. Nope, not that one, this one. Okay, I would also say that if you were feeding, let's say this plant wants 500 and you were feeding 1,000 and 1,000 and 1,000 and 1,000, at some point, if your plant was healthy, it would die from too many nutrients because you're feeding too much, too much, too much. Um, in terms of feeding too much, too much, too much, uh, I, I want just to put that in perspective when I go over that in the book. When I go over that in the book, um, page, uh, page 83 shows you the different thought processes because if you feed a thousand but you only feed a thousand every four times technically that's 250 ppm four times and i don't care if you do 250 four times you do 500 twice or you do 1000 every four times it's the same shit in terms of total ppm but there comes this point where uh that's with a healthy root if you don't have healthy roots, then suddenly a thousand ppm that worked in one in one plant in the same size bucket, a thousand ppm is now killing your shit. What worked last week, this week kills your shit. And so how can you possibly have any kind of a nutrient schedule from any manufacturer? How can you possibly get a nutrient schedule? The fuck are you gonna follow? Look at this picture. How the fuck are you going to? How the fuck are you going to use any kind of a nutrient schedule? So let me let's be clear. The only time a nutrient schedule works, I just want to make sure I'm looking at you so I can't walk back my statement because I always tell you guys the same thing. Nutrients are worthless. Um, oh, sorry. Let me uh, all nutrients. Um, this is this video. I've been saying I want to be more interactive with the uh, with the live chat. Um, <laughs> Paul, that's super funny. These are the videos that I'm looking at. If you guys want to link to, do not kill your shit in 12 weeks and go to heaven. That's what I'm talking about. So all I'm suggesting is is that the nutrients that we all buy. That you, that you buy, that I sell in my store. They are all fantastic. I don't care which ones you buy. I like Humble because they're inexpensive. And they work great. And they grow the same bud as all the nutrients you spend more money on. They're great. And if you want, like I literally made you guys a video that goes over... Um, truth about nutrients I made a series that goes over so you guys can look at like uh, the base nutrients humble nutrients okay, wait 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 it, this is uh this series of videos is called the truth about nutrients and in it okay, we're going to I just I just love this part oh for years now uh, I've been collecting is, and writing uh, down all that's the lone wolf you guys want to know who the lone wolf is there you go that's the lone questions wolf. my customers she runs the show. and if at any time during this video everything. you want to find your closest hydro store or where you can buy my book 
or any of the humble nutrient products you see in these videos, just click the opportunity button when it pops up or go to everyhydrostore.com. And now let's go over some nutrient basics. For instance, look at all these bottles on the shelves of hydro stores. Oh, I want you to just see look like at a... all that shit. It's like the candy aisle at a gas station. Okay, wait, wait, and wait. Those... I want you to see something specific. Okay. You're probably more confused than ever. And that's why we're going to build upon and tie in this information oh, in episode want... number two, concentration and quality, because that different about them. So you can make an informed decision instead of using your friend's secret sauce. And the best way to Don't do that your is to start friends. by explaining the basic differences okay. between the base nutrients so the and the nutrient cells. Three, part one. This series of videos is called The Truth About Nutrients. Um. Okay. Oh. auto failure system is this is a sea of green there's okay no 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 it's terrible this hotline and i'm the girl boss uh, i'm the girl boss okay part three part one part what you need i got so let's start with their oneness and this okay. is a five nine four and what <laughs> i that just means love for, this so i went to a did a bunch of shows in texas store, or where you can buy my book i did a bunch of shows in texas where i went and i did the same spiel i'm giving you right same thing so I did them in a bunch of hydro stores in Texas. I invited growers to come in and listen. Nutrient basics. For instance, look at all these bottles on the shelves of hydro stores. Just look at all that shit. It's like the candy aisle at a gas station. And those bottles are beautiful, right? The vendors really do put a lot of effort into the labels, trying to catch your attention, right? And yet, they're all about the same, aren't they? Because I'm sure the NPK and the micros they use in this bottle are the same as the micros and NPKs they use in that bottle. Just like it's all the same NPK and micros that are on the periodic table of elements, right? Oh, you've heard that before. Besides, most of this shit is probably made outside the US, like everything else. And even if they produce them locally, how much different can U.S. nitrogen be from Colombian nitrogen or nitrogen de Mexicana? Know what I mean? After all, there's only one nitrogen on the periodic table of elements. And now that you understand that, it also means, for the most part, all this shit is about the same. So, let's go over what's the same about them, and then we'll go over what's different about them so you can make an informed decision instead of using your friend's secret sauce. And the best way to do that is to start by explaining oh, Doc's the my favorite. Between Doc the is my favorite in Texas. Humboldt nutrient cells. Part three, part one, part. What you need, I got. Huh. So, so, this is the truth about nutrients. And when I tell you that, when, when you look at this picture here, when you look at this picture, doesn't matter what nutrients, y'all know there's too many. Nobody said, oh my God, this guy used too much of this kind or that kind or botanic or GH. Nobody said mills. Nobody said advanced nutrients or canna or uh, technoflora or emerald harvest or Humboldt nutrient or, yeah, I'm trying to think of all the shit on my shelves. House of Garden or Fox Farm or why? Because it was too many. That's why I tell you, you can switch nutrients, you can do all you want with that shit. But the reality is, if you switch nutrients, you can get more, less, or the same. Two of those three are losing propositions. So too many nutrients, right? So that's what you get when you get crispy. Now, could they be the correct amount of nutrients? Yeah. If there was a thousand watt light with 10 plants and they were all healthy and you were in a one gallon bucket for the first four weeks and then you transplanted to a three and then you went into a flower into a seven or a 10. But all these nutrients that you see are thousand watt lights based on 10 plants with a four week veg and an eight week flower going from a one to a three gallon and no problems. That's what all of these nutrients are based on. Thousand watt lights, 10 plants, four week harvest, eight week flower, no problems. Now, <laughs> if you have a 400 watt light, what are you going to do? Okay, I'll, I'll always ask you guys this about, I always ask you guys this. Okay, um, this is always a fun one. This plant, this plant is 10 weeks old. It was a clone 10 weeks ago at the start of veg, okay? 
That plant is 10 weeks old. Okay. Oh yeah, love this, love this one. This plant, boom, these plants are 10 weeks old. They are four weeks in veg and six weeks in flower. You tell me, would you feed these plants like these plants? Would you feed them the same PPM? Would you feed them the same concoction? <laughs> would you feed these plants? I mean, remember, if they're in veg, they want more nitrogen. And if they're in flower, they want more PK. So we're clear that you would not feed these plants like these plants. I mean, you would not feed, but they're both 10 weeks old. So how can you tell me, based on what week you're in, what you're doing? How would you see my... See my point here? Like we have to work backward. My plant's 10 weeks old. Great. One plant's 10 weeks old in veg and one plant's 10 weeks old, four in veg, six in flower. It's finishing. I mean, this plant's like two more weeks in flower. They're finishing. However, they can all benefit from microbes because microbes live on the roots. But all I'm suggesting is that you can't use everything all the time. Everything, and that's part of the finesse everything has its place and if you're doing too much too often and you're in there all the time mooching your plants doing shit you're never going to get what you think you're going to get all right oh that's nitrogen from uh mexico nitrogena okay um okay so if, oh yeah you know what i appreciate that um this is i'm trying to be more friendly with my live chat Oh, shit, it's working again. Okay. Boom. Paste that. Go back to the grow boss. Hit enter over here and hit enter over here. No, huh? Enter. Okay, so yeah, I can paste the link to my website so you can buy the book. That was smart. Thanks, Paul. Um. Oh, yeah. So you're following along the books. Let's see. Don't kill your shit for 12 weeks. Beanstalk plants. Okay. So I just want to point out that you can call in if you've got questions for the grow boss. If you want to talk about, if you, if you want to talk about this plant or this version of it, six, six, two, six, you're on at the grow boss. What can I do for you? Well, good morning, grow boss. Good morning. Uh, I guess it's been about a year since I chatted with you and uh, put some of your practices uh, well in in play. And things are going pretty good. But I did have a question for you about okay. uh, clones this morning. When you get a rooted clone, about what do you want to feed it? Okay. Um. 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 I got this for you. Okay. So what I did is literally when, when I... Everything must get what this control tray get. Okay. I just want to show you, like, literally, when I watered the trays, I just want to show you what I did. So, <clears throat> so we're... I mean, I just... Give me one sec. I'm with you. Give me one sec. It helps if I throw a picture down. That's why I've invested in all these videos so I can tie it all together. Okay. A little bit right, I think right here. Okay. Boom. When you look at this, there. When you look at. There, look at that water bottle. See that water bottle? When you look at this, you'll see that there's just this water bottle that I use. So, what do I mix my nutrients up in? I will show you right now. Okay, you watch that, and I will show you how I do this. Clonex solution. Look at that. Okay. So pause this. Go back here. Okay. So when I watered those plants, what did I do? 
I literally, since all of the trays got Clonex solution, I literally just pulled five mils up like this and squirted it into one of these. Because the plants want about five mils of food, but if I put them into a gallon, it gets a bit much and it's hard to water those starts with a gallon, but that was it. That was all I had to do to, and you're gonna see me put this on the shelf just like that and I will sell that to a customer. Why? Because I do hopes and dreams. So all I do is I, I just fill this bottle up like this and then I literally just water like you see here. Now, I'll tell you what the bigger question is that I get, and moustaches. I'll tell you the other half of that question is, um, how often? And I will tell you that this is week three in this video. In week, in week one, you saw them all on the shelves, right? I mean, these were all the plants were on the trays behind you. I'll tell you what I learned the okay. most from, from this video. And what I learned the most was when we started seeds, we had to water those trays every fucking day. Every day, they required a full bottle of water. I didn't feed them every time. But I fed them once a week when I told you I did in the videos. But I literally had to grab one of these water bottles and feed every tray every day at the start of the root race. It definitely would have been 36 hours. It would have been really dry. Now, what turns out, by week five at the end, I was watering every three days. Why is that when the plant, instead of a seed, why was I watering every three days at the end and every one day at the start? Do you know why? Mm, well, no, not exactly. The roots trap the water. Okay. The roots protected the water. Why? Because the roots need water. So the roots literally protected the water in the starts. So I only had to water every two or three days. Literally when I broke them out at the end on the show, I was just watering them with tap water because they were dying at that point anyway. I just watered them every couple of days. We weren't even looking at them and they did great. Okay, the roots died back, they got brown, the plants yellowed up, they weren't being fed, there was no light, they were being kept in a little shelf down here because we didn't know what to do with them. So somebody took them all out of the store. We didn't want to kill them because they look great. So for the next round in the Great Root Race, I'll start a tray of 50 of these. We'll use Clonex solution, and then we'll start growing them in other products. But, but that's, how, that's how I fed them, was just one of those scoops just like that. Now, is it the right amount? Is it the exact right amount? No, probably not. What's the chance of me landing on the exact right amount? But was it good enough for the race? Well, this is week three, and this shit's just killing it in week three. So, uh, uh, episode three, yeah, week three. So this shit's just killing it in week three. What I'm suggesting is that there's also a time factor involved. Like most people transplant their roots too soon. Um, I waited until the plants were almost dead in the space because I was trying to grow as many roots as possible. All I'm suggesting is that in, in all cases, you're trying to grow as many roots as possible. So you, if you found an amount that didn't kill your plant, you would continue to use it until your plant didn't get enough. Then you would know to add more. So one of the, quite one of the questions you guys always ask me is this. When do I switch from this to... I don't have a. Oh. When do I switch from baby food to a big nutrient, to a real nutrient? Now think about it. A three-part grow. If you add up all the NPKs, it's got like an NPK rating of 18. This has an NPK rating rating of 2.6. It's literally a 1.61. That's a three-part that has an 18. So when do you switch from grow from Clonex solution to grow food. Okay. There comes this point where four of these things won't be enough to feed the plants. And when you have to use four of these things, you go, why the fuck am I using four when I could use one of the next size up? So what we're talking about is concentration. It's not when you go to veg, it's when baby food doesn't provide enough nutrient. 
So when baby, when four scoops of baby food doesn't provide enough nutrient, oh, you'll do one scoop of food and like maybe like a half a scoop of baby food. See what I'm saying? Like when do you shift from first gear to second gear? And then when do you shift from grow to flower? Like this has been a debate you guys have had for years. When do you switch from grow to flower nutrients? When the plant tells you? Like when you go from veg to flower, you literally trim the plants and you move them into flower. You don't increase the light. You don't increase the nutrients. You don't change the nutrients. Why? Because tomorrow the plant is the same as it is today. So we have to think about things in terms of concentration sometimes. One of them is you have to take four scoops of this and you're like, fuck, why am I paying for four scoops of that when a quart of this and I can use one scoop because of the concentration. So there's a relationship between concentration and quantity. Because 1,000 ppms of this could be four scoops. 1,000 ppm of that could be one. There comes a point when you shouldn't be paying four scoops for this anymore. Doesn't have to be right when you go to veg. That's not, that's not necessarily an answer. That's just a time that you picked. Oh, when I go into veg, I switch nutrients. How about when the plant wants more than just baby food, I start giving it bigger food. But if you switch from Clonex solution to another food, you wouldn't change the PPMs. You would just change the quantity of the nutrient. So instead of four scoops, you'd have one scoop. So we're talking about both frequency and concentration. And I can only get you so close. That's why when you have babies, I try to not have you use like plant food for your clones and cuttings. They want clone and cutting food. That's what Clonex does. Everything. For seeds and clones you start them with you get the roots going you get the food going you give them clonex mist prior to taking your clones so the plant wants to root faster when you get them but these are all timing issues but does that answer your question for you well sort of okay. I, I really am curious though about uh, ppms in that okay. first week you know between when when you see roots that coming out of the rock will will well, when they've been transplanted into let's say perlite uh how quickly do we step up the ppm of this i mean i literally just actually, answered i take, literally i literally just answered that question because i don't know when you can step up the ppm because you have to wait until the plant tells you hey i yellowed a little bit but it will yellow evenly and when i say it yellowed a little bit i do not mean that it yellowed like this um, I do not mean that it yellowed like this on the tips. I do not mean that, I do not, I do not say it should be this way. I do not say it should turn yellow this way. Um, I do not mean yellow like this. I, I mean a, oh, oh, this was the good one from today. I do not mean yellow like that. What I mean is it pales yellow. And it pales yellow not because you rotted the roots, but because it's not enough nitrogen. So what you would do is you would take pictures, a careful notes in the 20 week tracker, and you would add more nutrients and you would have to reevaluate in two weeks. Listen, I'm a paramedic. I roll around this nonsense in the back of my ambulance. I look at a problem. You have to determine what its cause is and then treat the true nature in the emergency. Now, what I do is I issue drugs. I issue a treatment, whatever that be. And then in five minutes, I reevaluate my patient. Why? Because I can't give you that answer. All I can do is get you close enough. I mean, you could have a four foot four bulb at three feet, or you could have a four foot two bulb at two feet. Both of them are the same light, but one is brighter and a little further away. And there are some differences. What I'm suggesting is, is that if you're shooting for the lowest correct amount of nutrients, you have, to, you have to start with very little, and literally you have to wait for the plant, continue to feed that amount, and wait for the plant to use it all up, such that you say, oh, it needs more, and then you make a note, understand? Okay, yeah. Okay, think about it. Listen, call me back if you still have questions. I appreciate the call, but a lot of what I do is esoteric gets you have to think about it and put it together for you i can only get you so far 951 you're on at the grow boss hey grow boss uh i have a question for you um i've been having problems with these 
with this last grow, and I want to make him finish as soon as it's possible. I don't know if you have anything that you can recommend to make him finish as soon as it's possible so I can start again. Uh, oh, yeah. I've got that. Get a pair of scissors. Generic. So. Get a get a pair of scissors. I'll, I'll you'll be finished in five minutes. Cut them down. Oh, well, that's a good one. Yeah. Well, but I'm serious. Uh, like like I'm serious because wait wait you know. wait wait. First off, you got to talk into the phone because I'm losing you. It sounds like you're moving the phone away. But I'm serious. Like when I okay. tell you, okay, that's better. What you just called me up and said is I would like to finish faster. So that. That doesn't give me any information. For instance, is everything going great? Is Does your garden full of juicy, delicious, stinky buds? Does your garden full of stinky buds? Yes. The thing is, uh, the genetics that I, that I have in there, they're not the best. They were just regular dirt seeds, like from dirt Oh, seeds. that and doesn't matter. They're taking just too long. They just think it too long, and I, I've been thinking just to cut them off and start again. But they already have some flowers, and I don't want to, you know, I wouldn't like to waste all that, uh, whatever it is, you know. Okay. Well, again, the question is, is if the buds look done. Now, my my question always is, if the uh, no, no, really, they're like uh, halfway there. Okay, so we know they're halfway there in terms of looking at them. How long have they been in flower for? Oh, man, they're, they're a long time already. Nope. A long time. I need to know. Two months, three months, how long? you got to give me information. About three, about three months already. And okay, they're so, you're, so they're dead. They're not halfway there. There's no, there's no 24 week strain. Your plants are dead. They were dead when they went into flower. Cut them down and start over. Now, I just want you to understand, you didn't send me any pictures. I really don't have any way of knowing what's going on, except you said three months. There are no, there are no three week, there are no three month strains that, that are, there are no six month strains. So if you have three months, plants are dead, Plants have been dead for a while. I don't believe that. I don't believe that you would call me if you had a four by four tent full of buds, two by two feet deep. I, I don't think you would call me worried about when to harvest. Who cares? Like you would just harvest whenever you wanted. The question is always, why are you harvesting? Are you harvesting because they're not finishing? Okay, your plants are dead. If they don't finish, plants are dead. So, how much light do you have? Yeah, and I'm wasting too much time and uh, too much right. effort, too much, too much everything. So too I much start, everything. Again, I just, yeah. Okay, so tell me, how much light I, do you I, have? I have CO2. I got uh, 2,000, uh, 2,000, 2,000 watts and LEDs. Okay, and so you have two 1,000 watt LEDs. What size space are they in? Uh, four by eight. Okay. So one of the things that, and so this is why I tell you your plants are dead. And I know you, people don't like to hear it. And I understand that. But let me just go over why the plants are dead. And I can tell just by the nature of the question. That's why I tell you guys, once you do this for a minute, all you have to do is just grab hold of the one piece of data. Just like when I used to just like when I used to treat people on my ambulance. You make me say, damn, once, and I'm gonna take you to the hospital. You make me say, hmm, and I might not take you, but you make me say, hmm, twice. And if you don't go to the hospital, I'm gonna make you sign my form that said, I wanted you to go. Why? Because two hmms equal one damn. And so when I hear three months in flower and you're halfway through, that's a, Damn! So you got a damn. As soon as I say damn, it's over. You might as well start over. Plants are dead. So the problem here is this. A 600 watt light belongs in a 4x4 four four space. 4 feet wide by 4 feet. In terms of what that translates into, that translates into... Okay, I'm going to answer your call. Let me take another call too. I'm going to translate with... Oh. Hey, call me back. I just lost your call. So... You need to have, this is a, 
five by ten this is a five by ten space and so if you want two thousand watts worth of light you require a five by ten space that's one light one thousand watts equals one and a half pounds two pounds with co2 not only do you have to have a five by five space per thousand you have to have one top one foot long in every in every square because if you don't start flower with the top in every square where are you going to put it so soon as something doesn't go right everything down the pipe is going to go wrong and your plants end up finishing in the light so this is a five by ten space you have two thousand watts in a four by eight space i would just like to point out that four by eight is 32 square feet five by ten is 15 square feet for a difference of 18 square feet half of 32 is 16. so going from 32 to 50 is literally like 50 60 percent more it's like going from a four by eight to like a four by 13 with the same amount of light divided up over twice the area so a thousand watt light if you want a thousand watt light if you want a thousand watt light you have to have a five by if you want a thousand watt light you have to have a five by five space one foot deep full of tops when you start flowering that's why i tell you in a four by eight tent you can do two six hundreds or one thousand on a light mover why because a light mover gets you 25 percent more that math is simple all you have to do is go to the calculation chart right here light mover light light mover co2 that's how much light you have if you have a thousand watt plus 25 percent because you're on a light mover you've got 1250 watts 1250 watts is two 600 watt lights i don't care which way you do it what you can't do is put 2000 watts in the space so most of the customers that come in my store are you know when you start when you come from another store you don't know me you haven't bought your equipment but when you start and you don't know me and you come to my store most of you guys are failing I sell hopes and dreams you you all watch every video out there i hate watching other videos i don't it's not part i don't do research on other videos like i did with my books where i read the other books before i wrote mine i don't do research on the other videos because i just and there's a group here's a plug for you there's a group called the round table they've invited me to come talk with them several times i've never watched one second of their video People suggest that I go on their show and I hear they're pretty popular. Good, you guys talk about cannabis. You guys talk about the different strains. This last caller said he had great genetics. Got great genetics. The fuck cares? You put 2,000 watts in a four by eight. You were never going to succeed. You could have the best genetics. The fuck do I care? You could have the best genetics in the world. The fact is you killed your shit with too much light. So I don't care what your genetics are. You wouldn't have even been able to grow border weed. That's why it's called the Grow Book and Equipment Guide, because you have to know how to use the equipment if you want to grow. You can't grow correctly with the wrong equipment. You can't come in here and get, you can't come in here and buy fluorescent lights and then use these nutrients. I mean, if you've got a 400 watt, these nutrients are a thousand watt light. If you have a compact fluorescent, let's just say you have a hundred watts of compact fluorescent. You know, the ones that say 25 watts acts like a hundred because they're measuring from behind the balls. You've got a hundred watts worth of compact fluorescent. That's not 100 watts worth of HID. 100 watt compact fluorescence like 25 watt HID. If this nutrient's based on 1,000 watt HID and you've got a 25 watts worth of light, that's 1 40th. That's 2.5%. So if this said use 1,000 ppm, you would use 25. You'd use 25 ppm. How the fuck can you use 25 ppm? It's just not possible. That's why I tell you guys, the reality of the situation has nothing to do with what you think it does. 910, what can I do for you? What's up, bro? I've got a quick question for you. Uh, I got a 2x4 tent right now. Uh, I got 400 watts total. It's, it's two LEDs. They're 200 watts each. So I can spread them out a little bit better, get a better spread. And I'm thinking about switching this into my veg tent, using this as a 400 watt veg and upgrading to a 4x4 four four flower. Would you recommend using a 600 watt HDS for the flower or just kind of like duplicating this grow tent? 
and double it up, it'll be end up being 800 watts. Okay. Um, okay, so a couple of things that I always tell you. If LEDs, you, you got a smaller LED specifically to spread out the light. Why? Because LEDs versus HPS lights, HPS is very wide, LEDs are very focused. So you yes. got half the light, so you spread them out like this. The problem is, if you have the smallest plants because you're in veg, you're putting the smallest plants under very intense lights. Now, you have 200 watt LEDs. Okay, they're not that bright. All right, they're not that bright. However, I can't tell you if two LEDs are too bright for the space. I mean, if you, you said this was a two by four veg, right? Yes. So it's five feet tall. Your veg is a five foot tent, right? It's six feet. Six feet? Okay, yeah, six so feet there's tall. probably enough room to do your LEDs and veg. Okay, will they grow enough plant to support 600 watt HPS? I don't know. If you grow 400 <clears throat> watts of LED, if you want a 600 watt light yield, you have to start flower with a, with a one foot top in every hole or damn close to every hole. If you have a two by four veg, that means in veg, you must grow a canopy two feet. I'm drawing it out for you. You'll see it in a sec. You must grow a canopy. Yeah, I can't see it because I'm, I'm currently using my phone to talk okay. to you. And I was using my phone to watch it at the same time. You it's all good grow, to explain it. You have to grow a canopy that's literally two feet by two feet. Because if you do that, you're going to pull it into four feet by one foot here. So in veg, you have to grow a canopy that's two feet by two feet, so you can pull it into four feet by one foot, because that's what's required for your veg tent. Will your LEDs be able to do it? I don't know. I think so. I mean, it's close. The worst that happens is that you have to veg for a week and flower. The second worst things that happen is you grow them too fucking big. The third worst thing that happens, the answer is no. <laughs> so what would you recommend I do since right now I have uh, this uh, 400 watt and I use it just as a, a veg and I flower out in it. I start off with 100 watts because it's two lights and each one you can uh, do a veg switch and a bloom switch. I start off with 100 watts, let them grow out a few weeks, then I pop both lights, so it's 200 total, and I veg them out 200 in the whole tent. Okay. And then I put them in the flower with the <coughs> bolt switches, which is 400. And once I do 400, I move the lights all the way up to the top, and I do 400, so I keep them about three feet or more up, let the plants kind of grow into that light, and it works out fine. I don't get quite eight ounces, but I get about seven and a half, roughly, <coughs> over take, depending. I start from seed, so it varies. Uh, sometimes I, I think it'll stretch more than it would, but it doesn't, but average. But I was wondering if I would go to a 4x4, four four, would it make sense to just duplicate this room? The same thing, just go 4x4 four four and just put four lights instead of the, the two, or go to a 600 HPS. Since what do four lights cost watts, you? Save 200. What do four lights cost you? Each light was about 139. So two lights total, so it's about... So 142, no, 80, so 520. So 520 for four lights. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Should I just go to a 600 well, HPS to save you, me money? You tell me, man. If you come into my store, you can buy a 600 watt magnetic. You can buy a 600 watt magnetic bowl ballast hood for 120 bucks. You can buy a yeah, 600 that's watt. What I'm you can buy a 600 watt super sized hood with no glass and a bulb, Hortolux used bulb. You can buy a 600 watt magnetic ballast, super sized hood, no glass, like a six or an eight inch super sized hood, no glass, and a bulb, Hortolux, 160 bucks. Bring me cash. Oh, no, no, I, I totally understand. That, 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 that's why I'm calling to ask your opinion because this tent is doing good for me. I'm getting what I need. So I'm wondering if I duplicate it and not fuck it up or take a risk and go with an HPS 600 or just duplicate it and be on the safe side, even though I'll pay more money, but 
I won't fuck up because I'm used to this light. I'm used to the way everything works. So basically duplicate it just to be on the safe side. If you're getting seven and a half ounces, <clears throat> in your case, buy the same tent, buy the same two lights, and do a two light rotation that looks like, I'll, I'll show you what I, I suggest because you're starting from seed. That was a factor. So what I would suggest you do is you do another two by four. You do two by four, two by four, do the same two lights in each. And now where you said you were getting 7.5 ounce every, so you had one month seed, one month veg, two month flower. So you were getting seven point ounces every four months now, you said everything's going well. Brilliant, why are you doing anything? Now, if you wanna double the yield, just do the same thing over here, and now you'll get all the same data, you'll duplicate right here, and now what you'll do is you'll get 7.5 ounce every two months. Okay, that actually works out even better, so we will take up less space. Yeah, you, you like what you're doing. Okay, see, this is one of those things where LEDs are fantastic. Good for you. I mean, you've got all this going on, and all you have to do is get another little 2 by 4 tent, 6 foot tall, stick it up against the back wall, put another one next to it, and don't do a two-light rotation. Do a modified one-light. Do two one-light rotations where you veg plus flower in each space. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then throw like sativas in one and indica in another. That makes sense. That's pretty cool. Remember, uh, of a kind, and, of a kind, of a size, under a light. So you would do sativa here and oh, indica yeah. here. Oh yeah, I do the right. same. I I always do the same seed. Do the same. I don't put nothing else. If it's whatever it is, it, it is. I'll just do multiples of it. I have another question. So. I have a four inch right now, so I just, would that work for both? Just hook them up together, just with that one four inch fan? Yes, like yes, all you're going okay. to do is, um, give me one sec, because that way I can follow with a picture. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to see the picture, but I'll, but I'll watch it later. Yeah. That's okay. Everybody else will be able to see the picture. Super selfish. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. All right. All you're going to do, sir, is you're going to take your two tents. Now, this is a three tent setup. <clears throat> just discard. Don't think about this tent. You're going to take one fan filter. You're going to suck out of the room. And because you have LEDs, remember, you can't hook the ducting up. So all you do is set the ducting in the top, uh, top hole in your tent. That's it. Leave the bottom hole open on either side of the outside of the tent. And you're going to suck the room air into the tent. Well, you'll probably suck the room air into the tent down here and down here. It'll go up through the tent. And then it will go into here. See what I'm saying? Well, you'll see what I'm saying in a minute. It'll go in through yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and it'll go back into the room. Yeah, okay. And right now I currently have the back flap open and it's pushed against the wall, so I don't get any light coming through with the backs open. I just got the top venting out. But yeah, I'll check out that video and I'll just hook them up. That's, that's pretty simple. I'll just yeah. duplicate this room then. Makes yeah, sense. it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It works really well for you. And for the most part, your flower light and your veg light, I mean, you don't have to have them on. You could be vegging in one, flowering in another. They could both be flowering. Your house AC will take care of it. Brilliant. I appreciate the call. Thank you. All right. Thanks, man. Yes, sir. Okay. Again, just the right, just the right equipment for just the right space. And here's a guy who's doing a modified one light rotation. That's why I'm telling you, it's all in the equipment. It's not in the nutrients because this guy's knocking it out of the park. And the guy who is knocking it out of the park, who's super happy with his grow, is not all like, which nutrient should I switch to? Is he? That guy came up with the idea and he said, oh my God, everything's going fucking great. I'm gonna just duplicate this shit and double win. 
I don't care how you veg, don't care how you flower, don't care what nutrients you use, don't care what lights you use, don't care about any of that shit. Don't kill your crop for 12 weeks and then harvest, right? Good, good morning, you're on at the Grow Boss. What can I do for you? Hey, Grow Boss, how's it going? Good morning. What can I do for um, you? I got a question. Okay. Um, when, you know how the leaves are yellowing, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, under an uh, underfed leaf yellow is different than a, you know, crispy burnt leaf, overfed leaf. Yes, the because crispy, wait, 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 let's just be clear. Crispy burnt leaves, whether that be from too much light or too much water or too many, crispy burnt leaves from too much light or too many nutrients don't pale yellow. Yeah. So let's just stop right there. When you say pale yellow, okay. we already know uh, it's I not too much light and it's not too many nutrients. Right, but, but uh, I, I'm on the pale end of it because I'm, I'm on the underfeeding side of it and then I give it when it needs it. But the question is, either any problem with a leaf let's say the paling yellow or the uh, what um how much of the yellowing turns the leaf not be able to photosynthesis i don't 100 percent question right 100 percent. if there's no green there's no photosynthesis so if it's 50 percent green you're still getting 50 percent photosynthesis i'm not that smart <laughs> I got you on one. Yay. I figured. Uh, you, 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 so we don't know the percentage of when you don't get any photosynthesis. It doesn't matter. Do you have a recommendation when it doesn't matter. Do you have a there, recommendation? There, there. It doesn't. It doesn't matter because you have to determine: is it yellowing because it's not getting light and you have too much canopy, or is it yellowing from not enough nutrients? Right. Well, either, you know, both of them happen underneath the canopy. I pull, uh, when do you take them off? When do you start pulling them? When they're 50% yellow? Um, no, I'll, I'll tell you. Okay, I, I think I see what you're asking. I'll answer your question. I'll tell you when I, I'll give you an example. Um, here is the Bushmaster. Okay, here is the Bushmaster. Um, he touches his plants twice. So he starts in a red cup. And then when he goes into a one gallon, he super crops them, tops them, lollipops them, and handles them once. Then four weeks later, when he goes from a one to a three gallon, he tops them, super crops them, and handles them once. Then when he goes into flower, he tops and super crops and handles them again. Now you might top them once more two weeks into flower, a week into flower. So when I tell you that you should be in your garden once a week, maybe once every five days. Let's say you want to take off leaves every other time you go in the garden. Okay, that's once every two weeks. See, as soon as you start looking for reasons to take off leaves, listen, the fuck do you got to take the leaf off for? Unless it's shading in flower bud, unless it's shading a bud in flower. Like, why would you take off those leaves right there. The fuck are you going to do? Reach over your harvest? If you work in a flowering garden, you're going to break buds. So why are you taking off leaves? See, what you've done is you've called me and you've asked me, hey, what's a good reason to do too much? You're asking the wrong guy. Maybe some other show will have you do that, but like literally, even if you have to water every 48 hours, you don't touch the plant until the next transplant. There's nothing to be done. There's no reason for you to be looking at them. There's no reason for you to be involved. I, I don't mean to be, I mean to be brutal, <clears throat> but I don't mean to be disrespectful in any way. I'm just saying that those leaves here are yellow, and I wouldn't take them off. These leaves here are yellow. I wouldn't take them off the, because they're finishing. Why would I reach over and take off those leaves? I mean, it, unless you're doing too much. 
Okay, I had another series of videos that I wanted to, another series of pictures that I wanted to show you. Okay, so here is another garden. Here is the system. Okay, I would like, if possible, for you to, for you to tell me what's wrong with this space. Call in, give me one sec, call in, take a look at this picture, give me one sec. Okay, all right, 330, 330, I got you. Tell me what's up with this picture. Uh, yes, I wanted to um, see why my, my, plane, my class was turning light green. I wanted to know what was, you know, if I had my HPS too close, if it wasn't enough um, nutrients. I almost had the same problem with the, the same that I do have, except my plants is not turning light yellow, it's turning light green. At the, um, at the top of the leaves. Okay, so nothing up my sleeve. What size light do you have? I have a 400 watt HPS. What's the space? Um, two of them. Two 400s. What's oh, the space? I, you said you said what? You have two 400 watt lights. Right. What space are they in? Um, they in um flower. Nope. What size space? Oh, what size? I'm oh, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. A five by six. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you that well. Okay. No problem. So you've got one space that's five by six. How tall? How tall? You said, I'm sorry, sir. I'm moving away from this air conditioner so I can hear you better. Okay. Otherwise, I'm going to have you call you back. Said, how tall? Okay, you said it. Oh, my plant is um, at least five foot tall. Your plants are five feet tall. I mean, like three. I mean, the tin is five. The, the tin is five, um, five foot. But the, um, my plants are about three or four feet tall. They damn near touching the light. Okay. So what's getting yellow? Okay. So your plants are the plants are too big. You should have flowered them four weeks ago. How long in veg are you? Um, almost two months. Okay. So you have an eight week veg. And your plants are how close to the light? Uh, like 10 inches. Okay. Not even that. How many? How, shoo! Oh. How many plants? God bless you. Thanks. How many plants? Uh, five. Okay. Um, your plants are too close to the light. You need to go get a bigger tent and more light. Put it further away never let the light get that close again and i can't answer what's wrong with your plants because they're too close to the light the plants are too big you have other problems i need to solve and i just want to be clear I, this is not a cop-out like i'm not telling you i don't know what the answer is the reality is we can't know what the answer is until you get your plants under control you have to have your space is is five feet tall you have enough square footage to do 400 watts, but that's a really short space because if you think about it, you said your space is five feet tall? Yes. One foot for the hood, one foot for the bucket. You have three feet grow space. See, I would have said, I would have said two T5s because with this, you have literally, you have one foot for the bucket. You have one foot for the hood. And that leaves you three feet for the plant. I mean, I don't know how your light I don't know how your light can be three feet away from the plant when it's three feet away from the bucket. So I don't really without a picture of your plant, 
Just by the definition of the size and the space that you've given me, I can't believe that your plants are healthy. So I can't give you a way to go on because I, I can't imagine how you can create a situation where you're going to show me a plant that is literally three feet tall. I mean, your plant has to, the canopy is going to like be two feet right here. Your canopy will be two feet and your legs on your plant will be one foot. I mean, that's a, that's a real tight canopy to create and have them be healthy. See, if you had said the room was seven feet and your light was three feet from the top, I would be super pleased. But that's not where you're at. So I, I don't know how to go any further with that. Do you know the PPMs of your that you're feeding with? Um, no, I don't. I don't check my PPMs. Okay. So and with that, I tap out. All right, my friend. I appreciate you watching the show, but I do need a little more information. Um, if you're going to want me to affect a solution. See, it's easy to look at you and say, oh, you need better genetics. What the fuck is that? It's easy to look at you and say, oh my God, you got to switch nutrients. But if you use a different nutrient at the same PPM, it's not going to solve anything. So you have to determine and treat the true nature of the problem and then reassess. And so when I look at the situation, and I remember, I've looked at years and years ago, I looked at a forum. Like, I've looked at a forum like twice, and for a total of less than 90 seconds. Two minutes, less than two minutes, in, in 30 years. Well, however many years there's been forums. One forum had somebody asking a bunch of questions about nutrients and this and that. I didn't know any better, but I remember it was a pretty co comprehensive list. But I never remember there being any answers based on anything like that. So that's why my book is the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. And if you're going to grow cannabis, I think you should buy every book out there. If you're a reader, buy every book. I did. I read them all before I wrote mine. But I just want to be clear how valuable the, my book, The Grow Book and Equipment Guide is. When I went to become a network engineer for computers, so I'm MCSE, MCT, Novell, C, C, A+, I don't remember what all the fucking certificates they are. You have to go take computer tests. There's no class. I mean, unless you're going to spend $10,000 to go to school. So what did I do? I downloaded the brain dumps. I learned the answers and the reasons to every fucking question they were going to ask me on those tests. So I went, I signed up for the school, computers, it was 10 G's. I went home, downloaded the brain dump, got my money back for the school, went to the school the next day, hated it, it was ridiculous. They were a bunch of people scamming the teacher and a teacher that was like, straight out of Fast Times at Ridgemont High, the War of 1812 was fought by anyone, anyone, and just straight read right out of the book. So I went and I got my money back. Oh, fuck this. Six months school, I finished all my tests in three months and I was teaching at the school before my class got out. Why? Because I learned all the answers and the reasons why. I don't, almost don't even need to know how to do it if you know all the reasoning behind the scenes and you know all the experience of all those questions that they had on that fucking test. I'm a paramedic nurse. I never went to school to be a nurse. Once you become a paramedic, all you have to do is take an online test. I just downloaded all the brain dumps and I signed up for an online college and in seven weeks I was done with, a, I mean, a six month program. Why? Just memorize all the fucking questions from the brain dump. You don't even have to read the books. They condense it for you and give it to you backward. The best thing in the world you could do is get it backward and then know all the information. Why the fuck do they test you on stuff they're teaching you? They should te teach you three levels higher and test you on the first level so you can put it together. Hate fucking school. So slow. Oh my God, it's so fucking slow. So now granted, when I went to go do the nursing job, I was completely unprepared. However, I went to school to be a paramedic. I was unprepared for that and I was working on the ambulance as the intermediate and I was still unprepared for the paramedic. Okay, all I'm suggesting is that the more information that you have, the better. And the better the information that you have, the better. And when I started doing computers, they had this book called Everything You Needed to Know About Computers. And they showed a picture of a motherboard. And they drew a line and explained what everything was. 
Oh, and they took a CD and they explained what everything was. It was a big happy picture book that explained all the details of all the components. And then if somebody said, oh, I scratched the CD, in my head, you could physically picture all the different layers of the CD and the reflective coating and how it could possibly damage a CD. That's how it affects the stuff. There's nobody that's had the hydro store, that's had the customers that come through, that have had the training that I've had, that have had to do it on the level that I have with thousands of growers. There's nobody that put it all together like I did. And every time you guys came in, I wrote the questions down. Then I started adding the details, like when to use the microbes versus when to use the rooting hormone versus when to use the rooting gel versus when to switch from baby food to the next one. Because I could see thousands of growers, that's why. My book's the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. Because we really talk about a cannabis equipment here, don't we? We really don't go over the, the marketing aspect. I don't tell you which nutrients are best because they're all minerals. I don't tell you which light is best because I don't give a fuck. Use any light you want, as long as it's enough and you use it appropriately. I don't care how much you spend. If you want to spend 15 times the amount and buy LEDs, great. Spend a huge amount of money. LEDs grow great. The question is, it's never LEDs that kill the shit. It's always the guys who use LEDs think they're super smart. And they think they're smarter than Mother Nature. And you're not. Mother Nature's smarter than you. And the guys who do LEDs think they know what the perfect environment is. They think they know stuff. When they come to my store, they ask me questions, and then they interrupt me when I answer them. So I have a guy come in this weekend who's going to buy, who's going to build a Connex. And I was like, oh, that's brilliant. Do you know how to grow? Oh, yeah, years ago I grew in a garage. I'm like, did you ever finish? Oh, yeah. We grew for a couple years, finished a couple times. Finished a couple times in a couple years? Huh? And then the first question is, how much light do you think I need? What the fuck? You want to borrow my car and you ask me which one the brake is? <laughs> That's why I'm telling you. The details are more important than anything else. And when, here's another picture. Look at this picture. And you can tell me what's wrong with this picture. I mean, I've literally got that system in a smaller version right here for you to look at i told you this shit weeks ago when i got tried to get you guys to guess why i put this on the front cover so i really haven't looked through the pictures myself yet from this email and i think there was a bunch of information in it but i don't think we're going to need pictures i just don't think we're going to need pictures you know chief's garden mammoth p is great you know I, I gotta tell you in the last three months three months yeah the last three months i have had three people come in and ask about mammoth p the first time mammoth p sent me some samples and i was like yeah i don't i just toss them all because i don't give away samples at my store why would i do the vendors work for them their job is to drive customers to my store my job is to sell the vendors the product they ask for or educate them so if I don't carry your product, I just talk shit about it. Oh, you don't want that. You don't want. But here it is again. Chief's Garden's got um, um, a comment about Mammoth P great mixed with recharge. All I'm suggesting is that to some extent, um, you are allow um, you get a certain benefit from microbes. Do you get more from Great White or from Athos or from Root Maximizer from Clonex or from any of these things? I don't really know. I do know that you get 15% more from microbes. Now what we're talking about is who makes great microbes and the difference in the grower, because if you're a crappy grower, it really don't matter how much you spend on microbes if you've got six shitty plants. How do you deal with caterpillars? Woo. Okay, I really want to get through this series of pictures here because you look at this and what's the problem? So... I see this and I just want to put together all those little details that I give you, all those little parts and pieces when I see this. What I see is what looks like, I'm, I, I, it doesn't look like it's as deep as it is long, but I'm just going to say a five by five tent. I'm not sure what this foldy stuff is against the back, but in my mind for the moment, 
I'm going to hold a 4x5 tent or a 5x5. Five five. But I'm going to tell you the actual problem that I see with this tent. And, and I want, what the fuck is that? That is a side light. Look at that shit. So, one, I don't know what this thing is right here. I don't know. I don't, these are support columns or something like that. So this guy, <laughs> so let's just take a bigger look at this tent. So, so see this. So this guy's got one four by eight hydro. Brilliant. I mean, look at the floor of that nice drip pan. Okay, so the drip pan really looks like it's a four by four tent. Um, I really can't tell in this picture if there's two four foot eight bulbs, but we see that there's six plants and we have 400 watts worth of light. So that's, so in my head, I'm starting to put the pieces together, right? Um, one of the rules I'm already starting to think about is anybody who puts a side light up, dickweed. Why? Because plants don't photosynthesize on the underside of their leaf. And if you go through all the effort to put a 54 watt bulb when you have eight bulbs above them, you're the kind of guy who thinks too much. No disrespect, but this has nothing to do with building. This is about growing cannabis, is about doing the least amount of work and extracting the maximum yield from your light and your situation. So, first off, I always tell you guys that hydro grows faster than soil. That's why you harvest quicker. That's why I have this chart in my book that you need to go over because this gives you your risk reward for growing in hydro. This is your speed chart for how fast things happen, problems, growth rates, stuff like that. So, there are, again, it comes down to the equipment that we're talking about, but I just want you to understand that, that, that if you think about the life of this plant, first off, hydro means four week veg, short veg and hydro. If you remember last time we talked about this last week, I made this, I made a super clever little note here. In fact, I kept it. Remember I told you if you're growing in media versus hydro, in media, you tend to not do a one light rotation because it's a slow grow and requires more plants. Media tends to work better in two and three light rotations. Hydro doesn't work in a two light rotation because it's an eight week veg. You don't veg hydro for eight weeks, plants get too fucking big. So when we look at this picture, you have to tell me, is this a one or a three light rotation? Forget two light, let's just say it's one, two or three light rotation. Because if this is a two light rotation or a three light rotation, we physically have to remove these buckets and put them in a different system. We have to transplant to a different system. So that means this person would have to have another tent set up with more light because you double the light and flower and the same plant count. They would physically have to go to another tent to be put in another tent. So let's just for the moment, all we know is this is going to be veg and flower. So if we know that we're doing a fast DWC system, we know that a sativa is probably the wrong plant if you're gonna put six of them in there. If you do a sativa, you'd probably want four plants because they grow faster. So they fill up the space plaster, remember faster. Remember, we still have a limited height. Forget the fact that we don't have enough room. We still have a limited height. 863. What can I do for you? Is this the Grow Boss? Grow Boss, Grow Boss. What can I do for you? <laughs> hey, what's going on, man? Good morning. Hey, man, I got one quick question, man. Hey, what what nutrients? I, I, I hear you say it a million times. I hear you say it a million times. Nutrients don't matter. But what nutrients do you prefer? I know you don't use every damn thing they can put on the damn shelf, but what is your opinion of your go-to nutrients? Um, I use whatever nutrient comes with a broken cap. So right now I'm using, <laughs> I'm using Technoflora. Remember, I'm a hydro store. So what I do is I get credit yeah, yeah, for yeah. a broken cap and then I use that nutrient. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. Really, really, I like, I'm a one part guy. I really don't. Fox Farm is uh -huh. great. Botanicare is great. Um, oneness uh -huh. from, um, I really, I don't like things that smell bad. I don't like things that are goopy. I do not care synthetic from organic. I, I really. Okay. Oh. Okay. Do what I mean? I don't care. That's why I thought Fox Farm, and listen, we go through a lot of Fox Farm in the store. 
I thought Fox Farm's good. Uh -huh. But in terms of... Fox Farm? Yeah, Fox Farm has a one part. Okay, okay. So here, you know what okay. I mean? And, we are, and we are talking about growing cannabis, right? I that's I don't do anything else. I don't. Oh, I hate growing. <laughs> oh, I hate growing. My friend, it is slow. It is painful. I can go get it. Nobody spends fifteen hundred dollars uh, to grow tomatoes. I can get tomatoes from Walmart. <laughs> okay. Um, up on the screen, you are getting Fox Farm. Okay. So okay, when, when, yeah, here's their three part powder. Here's their base nutrients. Here's their three part. Oh, Tiger Bloom has a new bottle. Huh? Wow. Okay. <laughs> oh wow. yeah, delicious. Ah. Wow. So wow. here's some Fox Farm nutrients. Here's Bush Doctor Sledgehammer. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it is. Yeah. Okay, Sledgehammer. Nutrient. Oh, uh -huh. it's a flush. It's a nutrient rinse. Okay, so Sledgehammer is wow. a flush. Um. I I'll tell you. So so people, so you don't you don't care you don't care too much shit about advanced nutrients. I don't care about, I mean, you pull one nutrient out of a, let me tell you what I think about advanced nutrients. I think <laughs> advanced nutrients uh -huh. is run by the smartest people in our industry. Wow. Really? I meet them at the shows. I see them. Big uh -huh. Mike. Um, who's the rep? Vaden. I, I like that mm -hmm. when advanced nutrients goes to the show, that their females and their males all wear appropriate and matching clothing. Advanced Nutrients doesn't put wow. their females in a position. Literally, the girls that are there are like the wives of the guys that are there. The people at Advanced Nutrients have mm -hmm. been there so long that they are effective. And when you look at Advanced Nutrients, those are the most effective advertisers in the industry. So in terms of a little mm -hmm. industry backstory, remember, this has, uh, been illegal, uh, this has been illegal for a long time, right? So nobody ever said cannabis except Advanced Nutrients. Okay, so Advanced Nutrients, uh, like High yeah. Times Magazine, won. So, all right. Okay, all right. So, thanks for the call. So, Advanced Nutrients, in terms of High Times, they put cannabis first and foremost from day one. So, they are the brand of the industry that everybody knows. Nobody associated themselves by saying, better bud, use Advanced. They're super smart. But it's not just that. They're super smart with social media. They're super smart with all sorts of shit. And when you, all sorts of marketing, nobody markets, nobody distributes advanced nutrients. Advanced nutrients is self-distributed. You literally have to like deposit money in their account. Okay, so I have all these shelves in my store. Literally in just the quart size, if I bought everything advanced nutrients sells in just the quart size, advanced nutrients would fill up one whole rack in my store. They have, dude, I don't even know, but they have like a one part, two part, and three part cocoa, a one part, two part, three part media. They have um, one part, two part, three part hydro. They, they, I mean, like Advanced Nutrients has something for everything. They, they have like, I'm surprised they don't have LED nutrients. What do you think about that? Oh, you're growing with an LED? Oh, you need this nutrient as well advanced nutrients does one thing and they do that better than every other industry out there every other vendor out there even if you look at gh sorry uh westing west whatever the fuck it is that that bought gh and bought botanicare because remember botanicare and gh are both bottled in the same place they're both owned by monsanto owns west house or some shit like that whatever it is gh and botanicare are owned by the same company so what we're talking about is one company that manufactures bottled nutrients, they take some amount of N, like, you know what I mean? Like you can go to any fast food restaurant and those little ketchup packs are different, but Heinz is in all of them. Or that catsup shit, you never see the catsup shit in those little packets. All I'm saying is, for the most part, meat's meat. I mean, the same quality of meat is the same quality of meat in every fast food restaurant. Um, yes. 
So I'm just suggesting that they are the best in terms of marketing. And now that things are going legal and you go to like MJ BizCon. Okay, so I'm going to a couple marijuana shows. You see I've got marijuana on the front of my cover. Marijuana starts to become more legal and the industry starts to shift, but not every vendor and not every distributor wants to be like, I don't keep a marijuana book in my store. I have a hydro store version with no marijuana in it. I keep that in the front of my store. I don't put that one on display like that. You know what I mean? I don't have a bong on my counter in the front of my store all day. So I still play by the rules because the squeaky wheel, I mean, the nail that sticks up gets hit with the head. You know what I mean? So get, gets hit with the hammer first. All I'm suggesting is that I, I try to within the tolerances of I can do, but cannabis has been illegal for a long, long time. And it's just sort of becoming legal. But these nutrients have been around for a long, long time. And cannabis has been the same. I mean, they may, the strains may get better. They get bred better, but it's not based on the nutrients. That's why what I suggest is this. Will nutrients make a difference? Don't know. They might do better. They might do the same. They might do worse. So if you switch from one to another, yeah, maybe. But in terms of the pecking order, what I always like to tell you guys is, let's say you have a thousand watts worth of light, a five by five tent full of plant, two feet deep. You get a pound and a half of bud dry. If you were to get a second, like that caller earlier, if you were to get a second tent and you put a thousand watts in it and, and you, you now have two trays, two five by fives, you have effectively doubled your light. You have twice the amount of light, but you don't put two lights on one space. You double the canopy if you want to double the yield. See what I'm saying? So do you double the nutrients? No, you double the amount of water that you're using and you double the amount of nutrients that you're adding in terms of the volume that you're using, you use two scoops instead of one, but you also have twice the water because you have twice the space. So things are proportional. You can't just put 2000 watts on one space because you can't put three pounds where only a pound and a half will fit. You can't put three pounds where only a pound and a half will fit. What the fuck was this picture about? Oh, okay. So you have the fastest system with the, with too little light in too small of a space. Hmm, what do I think is going to happen to this grow? Like, I haven't actually seen these pictures, okay? I'm, I, you and I are going through them. They sent them in an email. I copied them over right before the show today. So all I'm suggesting is when I look at this picture, what I think is, that's a lot of fucking plants for the fastest system in a really small space. And that's a very expensive system. And that's a problem. Why? Because whatever you do in veg you must duplicate and flower and whatever you when you grow in hydro whatever you do in hydro you have to do in veg i mean in flower you have to do in veg right i mean you can't take this and put it in dirt and you can't start them in dirt and put them in hydro so whatever you're going to go into in hydro you have to start that's another one of those things that i always tell you that you guys need to hear that's why i'm going through these pictures and working through these problems with you so i already know that if if, if fast systems grow big plants really fast, that and in fast systems in hydro, it's expensive to switch from veg to flower into a second room. This guy either has a second room or he's in trouble because he's got a lot of fast growing plants in a really small space in a really expensive system if he does have a veg and a flower. So all I'm suggesting is that I already see this problem coming, right? Okay, let me open up the next one. Blam. Okay, hey, not bad. Remember when I told you that high oxygen systems grow bushy plants? Listen, this plant does not have too much light. It's not miniaturized. It's, I know it looks compact, right? I know it looks like there's a lot of branches coming out of it. But I would like to suggest that this plant, um, this plant seems to have, seems to be much bigger. This plant seems to be bigger than this one and seems to be more similar to these two. Now remember this plant gets the light from here and here and the back wall. This one here doesn't get necessarily get the same amount of light. That's why when you use a light mover, things get bigger. Um, in the middle if you don't have that delay at the end but these plants look good but look at how bushy they are why because in fast systems with high oxygen at the levels at the roots you get bushier plants
Okay. Next one in the series. Okay, so it looks like we got a sativa, right? You got those long, thin leaves. They're growing really fucking fast, right? I mean, they're already on top of each other, right? I mean, like, we're just going to have to say that this is probably three weeks in veg. Why? Because it's a fast plant in a fast system. So what potentially would be four weeks to us if you put a fast plant and a fast system and a fast healthy plant, fast system, healthy plant, then we would say three weeks. Then we factor in the light. Now it's a little bit less light, but you can, you're can. already in the position where we can't see the floor through it. That's a big deal. We can't see the floor through it already. We're getting ready to have to go into flower based on the amount of light in veg. We're going to have to go into flower. So let's see what happens. But these plants look good. Look at how bright green they are. Have to start wrapping up the show soon. But look at how bright green those plants are. Because I'm going to end up getting a customer in my store. Okay. It's coming up. Oh, super frosty. And you can still see bright green. Look at look at the, the petioles. Bright green. Mmm. Even especially where I always look, and when you do a good job and you and you don't have enough uh, and you have enough mag, that's the first place. Like not even right there, right there. That's the first place. The leaves will get dark green right here, and you see these are dark green, but there's no purpling. Brilliant. None of them. Like, like none of them. Oh, there's some right there at the very bottom. Spec fucking tacular. Okay. Let's uh, open up the next one. Okay. See this top right here? Now, this is where the problem runs in. This is where you run into a problem. See that top right there? I think we're going to start to see more tops like that. Okay. Here's the problem. You, he's going to finish in this system, but I, I, I would like to bring one. I would like to bring one another video into this as, as to use as a reference source. Hang on a sec. Um, T five haters say what? Okay. This one, this one, that, and back over here. Okay, this is T5 Haters Say What? And I posted it on the live chat. This guy, <laughs> ready, 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 and oh shit. That's T5 Buds and Media. That's why I tell you the T5 lights, best for the home grower. The problem is this bud right here. This bud right here <clears throat> should never have been allowed to get that tall. And if we continue looking through the garden, there's another tall bud right there up front. But you can see the canopy sort of got away from him. And that means... Look at those plants. Look at those fucking plants with T5s. Now that's what you can grow. That's probably week four or five flower, maybe week six. The problem is, whenever you get a plant that runs into the light like that. You have to put the light far enough away so this, this top doesn't burn. And if you do that, then you sacrifice all of this or you burn the shit out of this one so the rest of these can be healthy. That's why I always show you. I'm going to spill that bomb and keep doing that. That's why I always show you um, this. 
this picture because you got to get them just right. They all got to be doing the same thing at the same time, of a kind, of a size, under a light. Can't have this all over the place shit. Of a kind, of a size, under a light. So let's go back to this. So the buds look good, but there's a couple of runaway tops. Now, the problem that he's going to really run into, though, is that because there's so many of these runaway tops, he's not going to be able to get that harvest. But that's not the only problem. The other problem with this is that if you have, if you should have 60 buds, all even, and you have four buds or six buds sticking up, that's one waste. But two, if hydro is faster, and you can see in the T, in this T5 video that this is about the extent of the buds. Now, once they finish, you can see they're in week four or five because of the, the hairs on them. But once these finish, you can see they're not going to physically, they're not going to get as large as outdoor buds. They're not going to get as large. There's a lot of tops there. They're not going to get as large as what's possible. But the buds, once they dry, you can't tell the difference apart. So once we sort of have that idea that all these buds are uh, the same and we get the idea that shaping the garden is sort of all relevant, then when we come back and we look at this, if they get that top a little more under control, then everything is going great. The problem is when you grow in media, it's 50, 35 watts a week. When you grow in hydro, plants grow 50 watts a week. They grow faster in hydro. If this is a 12-week process with a four-week veg and an eight-week flower, that's 12 weeks. 50 watts times 12 weeks is 600 watts. That's why I tell you to grow in hydro. It's a very difficult thing with 400 watts because this guy is about to run out of space. This guy's about to run out of space. Now, with the amount of light that he has, he's also about to run out of light. Okay, now, because he has so little light, if he vegged for, you, you saw how small those plants were, just like, like a three week veg. Okay, it might work. It might work because he keeps the plants real small. But, I mean, he's still got an eight week flower. If I'm suggesting four week veg, eight week flower, you're at 12 weeks. Shaving 11, one week off of 12 and making it 11 weeks, it's like 8%. So he's shaving 8% of the time off. That's why in hydro, you do a lot of plants because you want a short veg time and you don't want a large canopy. In terms of that, even if he had two four foot eight bulbs, you would have to get like a 12 bulb or a 16 bulb because in a 12 bulb, in, in this case where there's one light per reflector, um, in a 12 bulb, you would have two lights per the same reflector. So the, the reflector doesn't get much bigger, but the light's more intense. So your this guy's job would have to be to either get a 12 bulb to finish. See, now if you get a 12 bulb to finish, that's a bulb a week. Okay, so it turns out that the guy is a really good grower. I still don't know what the bar in the background is. I, I, but, I, but I do know that, that there's nothing to be said about this grower because you look at the bud and he's knocking it out of the fucking park. So my initial assessment is incorrect. It what looks like a, well, my initial assessment wasn't, my, was disaster and that was incorrect. The other part of my initial assessment was it's a lot of plants for a small space. And that makes it a short veg time. So if you want to be successful because plants in these systems grow very fast, one, you have to stay in the tent and you have to flower quick and it's not a lot of light. So all of those things I put on track for blowing your shit up. But in the end, when we look at what he did, he blew his shit up, looks great. I mean, that's T5 bud week four. <clears throat> so he's still got four weeks to go. That's why I tell you guys that there's really a difference between soil and hydro in terms of speed. I mean, he's sort of at the limit of his light halfway through flower. Now, one of the comments earlier was 
one of the live chat comments earlier was, um, what was the comment that, oh, was that you don't need to pay $100 to the grow boss for my grow boss hotline that you didn't need to pay like 49 bucks. It's 49 bucks for an hour, 79 for a facility. But think about that, more than 10 lights. And think about this grow and how close I was to describing the situation. Because what I actually did was I described two situations. <clears throat> one was the failure. One was the success. So he didn't meet any of the failure requirements. And what did he have? Success. And the only limit that he ran out on was not enough light at the end and a little bit of canopy control, a little better canopy control. Brilliant. And... I'll tell you, he could probably increase his yield by 25% if the canopy was more under control. But, and I don't know what the rest of that stuff in that tent was. I will say, I have nothing to say about his nutrients. Why? Because the plant looked fantastic. And I got nothing to say about his watering schedule. Why? Because the plants looked fantastic. I do have something to say about his canopy no matter what the light is, but especially because he has very little light. And part of that is you would have to flower earlier, but then you get bigger, bushier plants when you grow in hydro. All I'm suggesting is that was a pretty sophisticated grow where we see the minimum amount of light in the fastest fucking system there is. And that's what plants should look like in progression. And then when I open up, oh, wait, 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 I got one for you. Then when I open up, okay, 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 all right, okay. Nope, not this one. Then when I open up, uh, oh, oh, this one. Oh, yeah, this one. I open this, oh, okay, let me, let me open up the one next to it. Okay, then I show you, oh yeah, yeah, I love that one. Okay, so this guy's got 400 watts. His plants are, the canopy is this fucking big. This guy's got two LEDs and his canopy looks like this. Those other plants, um, um, okay, bum, 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 what was, these plants are three weeks old. Uh, um, these plants are six weeks old. It's painful, isn't it? I get a lot of people that kill their shit. Uh, I probably have time for this last call. 908. What can I do for you? Hello. Yes, I have a question for you. Uh, a mad question. I'm on my second row, and I... Both rows, I always have purple stems and purple petioles. And I've been doing the 40% mag profile, and I still seem to have purple stems. Purple okay, then you're overwatering. You're either overwatering or your light's too close. Period. So if, you don't, if, you're, if you're giving the plant enough mag, by definition, there are two other things happening. Either she cannot absorb it, or she can't absorb enough from too much light. So my question to you would be, how much light? Okay. It's a, it's a 215 watt draw. That's the draw of LED light. Okay. How far away is it? Uh, right now it's 10 inches from the top cola, which is like, it is a couple inches too close according to their instructions. Or, or you don't have enough plant. All right, I'm going to take this call because I got to. I'm going to finish this call off the air. Thanks for the call. I got to wind this up because I'm going to get a customer here in a minute. Or, or you don't have enough plant. See, if you put the light, all I'm suggesting is this, and then I'm going to have to wrap this up. All I'm suggesting is that if you have a light that requires this much canopy. I don't care how many plants this is. You can do one plant or four plants. I don't care. However, if, if it requires this much canopy and you put two buds this close, not only do you have less canopy, you have more light. 
So one, you cannot diagnose purple underneath an LED because LEDs make the colors wonky. Two, that's too much fucking light for the plants. So I don't know if you had a canopy that was two feet deep in there, that might be the right amount of light. So there's this balance where if you're giving it enough mag and it's not fixing the problem, you're overwatering or you got your light too close and she can't absorb it. Because we're either talking about you increasing the mag or you, remember this is the law of minimums. So you either have more light than the plant can handle, more water than the roots can handle, or you're not giving it enough mag. Okay, sounds like you're giving it enough mag. The question again is, how purple are the petioles? Now, you don't even need to tell me that. All you have to do is tell me, are your leaves chicken clawed? Because if your leaves have any... If your leaves have any chicken claw to them, where the intervenal spaces are puffy, you've overwatered. I don't care how big the plant is, that's overwatered. And if they have these yellow spots from too much light, um, really what we have to do is look at the other factors that go into the components because your leaves should be big, dead fucking flat, face up, excited, ready to go with no purple here in the petioles. Just like when I was showing you on this series of plants, look at those leaves, bright green, light, bright green, ready to go. You know, again, I'll show you in this picture what I'm talking about. Bright fucking green and excited and ready to grow. That's what you're looking for in your plants. Now, how do you get that? By giving them too little nutrients. You can't give them too much. More nutrients don't equal anything. You were talking about nutrients earlier. All I'm saying is, if you have the perfect grow, then perhaps changing your nutrients might get you 3%, 5%, 7%. But if you want to absolutely double your crop, it would require that you, and I was just telling you about this, it would require that you double your light, it would require that you double your canopy, and it would require that you double the amount of nutrients you use. However, you would be using twice the amount, but the same amount, but under twice the plant, because you would have twice the water. So if you want to double your yield, in all cases, you've got to double your garden in every aspect. So short veg, that was a great set of pictures. I really like that set of pictures. It really gave you an idea of what I'm talking about. When I see a system, I just talk about statistical probability. I was dead wrong on that garden series of pictures, and yet I was 100% right. The probability of somebody failing with that combination of equipment, I'm still looking at you and telling you that guy knocked it out of the park. But if you tried it and you didn't know how to grow, that's a 100% failure rate for that setup. There are so few people that can handle a system like that, that that guy, and that guy deserves the success that he has. But more importantly, the success that he has wasn't based on the nutrient or the light or the system. He used a combination of systems that I would never recommend. I could never look at a customer and say to use that, even though there's the pictures. Think about how expensive that system was. Those buckets and all that shit versus a $20 bag of soil, $10 worth of buckets and saucers. And the technique that went into it, it's just not a first grow situation, but it is definitely a brilliant fucking grow. Definitely. I mean, here's a guy who spent $30,000 on a hot rod car that he sells for $7,500 because that's what the market is. It doesn't matter how much you spend on it. Just like, <clears throat> just like it doesn't matter how much you spend on your grow. Bud's going to come out the same. You can't tell an LED bud from a T5 bud. You can't tell what system it was in. You would never look at that system and guess six bucket DWC 400 watt T5. Come on. I sell more T5s than anything in my store. And I still never would have guessed that system. And if you brought me in that butt, what the fuck would I know? What would you know? That's why I'm telling you this is all about technique. It's all about knowing the equipment to use. 
it's all about just getting the basics right like you see from the products here you watch in the videos i show you how green pad works and how you consume more nutrients with more co2 in the great root race i put up a third video i put up the episode three so my sponsors of course clonex solution clonex rooting gel thermoflow mondi mondi sprayers humidity domes ushio Mondi hydrometers, the Grow Boss Mega Meter. You can buy my books. You can buy all, you can all these things. If you have questions about your garden, you can get them on the GrowBoss.com. This is the cannabis hotline. This is you can buy my books. It ships discreetly. This is what you're looking for. This is all the information. And really, I'm telling you, growing cannabis is not what everybody tells you it is. Pretty much, you don't kill them for 12 weeks and then harvest. Um. Books are available online. I always appreciate the questions and the calls and the pictures. And while if you send me pictures, I'm probably not going to respond. But if I like them, I'll use them on the show. Maybe there's some information to be gleaned from them. Again, I ran out of time to talk about Project Grow House. <coughs> um, yeah, these you can if you like these shirts. I've got them up on the growboss.com, the made for marijuana shirt with the vendors on the back. If you want to learn how to grow, you should buy my books because they're really the, 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 the way to grow is not to fail. And that's what comes through my store. So I have all those, I have all those books and stuff. Um, woo. Ah, let's see. Yeah. I don't think I have too much more for you on the Sunday. The store is going to have to open up in a minute. There's a bunch of you shit. I've been selling you shit for the last week. Ah, oh, how thin that pile is. But I buy it all summer. Like, I'm not worried. I buy it all summer. I sell it all winter. I got rid of those little hoods for like, oh, oh, yeah. Sold that guy. Got that bulb off him, too. Remember, I sell hopes and dreams here at the store with that high of a failure rate of people that grow cannabis. The more you do, every time I smoke that, I <laughs> Oh, that was awesome. And that is the end of the show. Ah, spec.